Okay, well, one of the first things you might notice is that white has a discovered check with the bishop on a5. The problem is, if white ever moves that bishop on a5, not only can black put the knight on, a, on c2 in the way, but it can also take the rook. So you might say, well, what if I just play rook to a4 on the first move and then move the bishop? The problem is that this doesn't guard the b4 square. And this is also the problem with playing a move like rook to b4 to guard b4, because if you move the bishop out of the way, the knight will simply take off the rook. So guarding b5, sorry, I said b4, but guarding b5 with rook b4 uh, doesn't work. Again, you get two moves in a row. Let's see if a knight can mate. Let's see here. This knight on g5 can check in two moves. Let's see if those moves are made. Let's take the uh, lines off the board here. Let's see. I guess we can move the piece and take it back. So knight, suppose we play knight here. We have to guard b5, so the only knight check that might do that is knight c7 if we get another move. But knight c7 is not made because it can be captured two different ways. So moving the knight from g5 over to c7 doesn't work. Moving it to c5 clearly doesn't work because black can always play king b5. In fact, any random check where black can play king b5 doesn't work. Well, now I notice something interesting. This bishop here on b7 is pinned, so he's not really guarding this pawn. So maybe I could take that pawn and do something with that. Well, the problem with that is I can't take the pawn in one move. And if I take two moves to take the pawn, the only kind of piece that would checkmate him would be a queen, because I need a queen to guard b5 also. And if I had a queen on the board, which I don't, then the knight could still go on the way. So unfortunately, let's just get the lines off the board again. Unfortunately, taking on c6 to take advantage of the pin bishop doesn't look like it's going to work. That's too bad, because we like those pin pieces that are not really guarding things, but you know, playing rook c4 and then rook c6 check is not made. He has knight b6, he's got king b5. So that doesn't work either. All right, can we guard b5 in a different way and then move the bishop and mate? No, because if we play c4 to guard b5, then again, bishop to, let's say, d8 is not mate because of knight takes, c, knight takes a2 or knight to a3. c4 is not going to do it. Well, and we can't check with a knight on f3. Um, so we're running low on ideas. What's left? Well, the king is on a light square. How about if we check with the bishop? Well, if we take the bishop, it's not going to be made because the queen can always go take it even if we guard it. And if I play rook takes e7 and then play bishop takes b7, he's still got king to b5. So that doesn't solve any problems. But notice the bishop can't check on b5. He can't check on c4. He can't check on d3. He can't check on e2, but he can check on f1. So what happens if we play bishop here, and now we make it white's move, and we play bishop to f1? Is that mate? Well, the two black knights are both on light squares, so they can't interpose. Uh, the bishop can't interpose. The queen can't interpose. The rooks can't interpose. So guess what? That's the answer. That's the mate. So the answer to the problem is the only way you can mate black if you get two consecutive moves is you play bishop h3 and bishop f1. Or for those of you who like regular rules, the only way we can threaten mate in one is to play bishop h3. All right, so that's the answer to the problem. The answer to the problem is bishop h3 followed by bishop f1. These uh, board vision problems, you know, as I always say, you know, if they're the only problems you do, well, that's not good. We want you to do white to play and win and white to play and mate and all those kind of things. But doing problems like this helps develop your, your brain's ability to process what the chess pieces can do.